soil, profile and constituents. Where are we going? To see the many layers of soil. Didn't we just discuss them? We discussed how soil is formed, not how it is organized. Now, look at the side of this hill. What do you mean, organized? What you are looking at is soil profile. Soil profile is the vertical arrangement of soil layers. Each layer has a different color, organic matter, chemical composition, porosity, and arrangement of soil particles. Haven't you wondered what the parent rock exactly is? I suppose that would be helpful to know. Good. The parent rock is the foundation of all soils. It can be referred to as the bedrock. Water is stored in here and plants with deep roots can access it in terms of need. This is the base of the profile? Yes. And the next up is the substratum or weathered rock layer. It is partly made of weathered rock with no humus. Humus? Humus is the organic remains of plants and animals, but that's a subject for another day. Now, quit interrupting. Above this layer is the subsoil. It is more aerated than the substratum, but it can contain an impermeable layer called hardpan. This is due to leaching of minerals from the topsoil and makes a layer of accumulation. I know topsoil is the utmost layer and has a high hu hu humus. Yes, humus content. It is very aerated, dark, and contains a lot of living organisms like worms and plant roots. And do not forget about the superficial layer. This is just the decaying material covering the ground. Easy enough. How do the layers not blend together? That is the beauty of it. They do blend, making them have a transitional zone or a merging of soil layers. I have a feeling the profile helps determine something. Not something. A lot. Well, at least when it comes to deciding what crops to grow. Deeper soils are more developed with the nutrients than shallow ones. We are talking a lot about soil, but I still feel I don't know exactly what it is made of. That is very true, Sam. Soil constituents are made up of mineral matter, organic matter, air, water, and living organisms. Hmm. The mineral matter must come from the parent rock. It would make sense since as the rocks are broken, they release their minerals. Great thinking, Sam. Water and air occupy the spaces between the mineral particles to fully make the soil. The water cannot be the same through all the profiles, right? Another great thought, Sam. The three types of water in the soil are superflows, capillary, and hygroscopic. Superflows is in the mic macro pause and is loosely held. Too mo much of it will cause nutrients to be lost due to leaching. Leaching? Like the animal that sucks blood? Similar concept. Too much water sucks away the nutrients as it is drained away. Now, capillary water occupies the macro pores, held with greater force by soil particles and is available for plants and why it can be referred to as the available water. Makes sense. Now, hygroscopic water is a thin film and is not available to the plants. Not all soils have this water. Clay, for example, has a lot, while sandy particles contain very little. Do plants need water for the same reasons we do? Kind of. Water helps dissolve plant nutrients, essential for photosynthesis. It helps keep plant structure by hydrating protoplasm in the cells and helps them cool off during transpiration. So then, do plants need to breathe as well? Yes. Different soils have different amounts of air in them. The plants and living organisms need the air to live in the soil. Soil can drown, in a sense, if there is too much water, meaning less air and less ability to make nutrients in it. This means there is need to be a balance between air, water, and soil to do well. Except rice. You are smarter than you look. Yes, rice and mangrove are exceptions. Why are living organisms in the soil? It sounds scary and dark down there. They help make our favorite word, humus. The macroorganisms are the rodents, earthworms, ants, and plant roots, which help make the soil loose and aerated. So, by them needing to breathe, it helps the soil. In a way, yes. Now, the smaller helpers, known as microorganisms, are the bacteria, fungi, and protozoa. So, these are the decomposers and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Good memory. Now, specifically, it is the rhizoboam bacteria that fixes nitrates. 
But there are some microorganisms that damage the plant too, right? Like pathogens. Correct. The good ones help make the soil organic matter. This is a fancier name for the humus. The macroorganisms help physically break it down, while the micro help biologically break it down. It will release such gases as carbon dioxide, sulfates, nitrates, and phosphates, all needed by plants. This does give me a firmer grasp of what soil is made of. But you keep talking about different soils. What makes them different? Ah, my boy. Like us, they have physical and chemical properties. Let's go get my jars of dirt to look at. I always thought you were weird to collect dirt. 